right now in this season, I feel like Paul. I was reading in Romans when he was talking to the Romans about wanting to get with them. And he was traveling and all this stuff was happening, so he couldn't be with them. Man, I feel like that right now. I feel like I just want to make visits to all of your houses and impart the faith that's in me right now and let it encourage you. Man, if I could, I would jump through this screen right now into your living room. I'd jump into your house and I'll just let that fire fall in your life. I want to encourage you so much. And I want to do that individually to all of you. But until then, this is going to have to do. We are going to have to dive into the Word of God together. And I just pray that today this Word infuses something in you. Man, it lights you up. It doesn't just uh, just another message or just doesn't you know, inspire you or make you have goosebumps or maybe even have a couple of quotes to put in your journal. But man, I pray that today God's Word wrecks you. I pray that it wrecks your heart, that wrecks your mind, that wrecks what you've thought about in the past and takes you to a new space, a new place of faith. We're in this series rooted in him. That is a whole new lifestyle. That's a whole new place, man. When you go to be not just resting on him, but you have enough patience to be rooted in him, you are solid, my friend, solid. And in this series, that's my prayer for you and your family, your heart, your life, everything about you becomes stable and ready to take on what God has for you. It's time to stop wasting time. This is a time that the church needs to go deep. Can you hear him calling your name? Man, if you stop and you push pause, you can hear him. God is calling his people to submit to him right now. God is calling people to an intimacy with you. I'm telling you, we are living in the new covenant. No longer can we go back to how it was. We've got to press into what God promised over his people. I'm telling you, the Jeremiah promise, the, the promise that he spoke in Hebrews, the, the promise over his people is say, I will be their God. That is alive and well in this season. And man, if you are not yet tuned in, if you're not yet plugged into him, if you're not yet plugged into a life-giving community, this is the time. Do not hesitate. Do not wait anymore. There's no better time than the present to press into who Jesus is. Man, if you're just catching this, maybe someone invited you to it, or maybe you're just scrolling and you found you know, this randomly, hey, let me encourage you. God's got your number. Holy Spirit wants you so bad. He designed you and created you, and he is calling you to himself. The purpose of God is so amazing. And so we're going we're gonna to find that. We're going to find that purpose. We're going to find our identity. We're going to find true living when we get rooted in him. So how many of you are ready to get rooted? Come on, give me something in the comments right now. Tell me how ready are you to get rooted in Jesus? Woo! Last week, we made a decision. And I hope you did that. I hope you walked away from this word and put it into practice. I hope you decided to dig a hole, to plant yourself, to plant yourself in what God is doing in you right now. Not to run, not to look for the next thing, not to be Pocahontas, you know, just around the river bend is gonna be something else. But you decided, as for me, and myself, and my house, and my family, and my network, I will serve the Lord. I will make a difference in my life. And you pre-decided to stay. So we talked about pre-decision to say, yes, God, I will stay here until you're done. I will stay here until I'm fully developed. However long it takes, it doesn't matter. If I need to stay here for years, I will do it. If I need to stay here for just a moment, I will do whatever it is, God, I will stay. You got to pre-decide. And then we talked about praying the hard prayers. And I hope you've been doing that this week, praying, God, search me. Holy Spirit, wreck my heart. Let, let me just see everything that is unclean in me so that I can become the pure vessel that God can use. So I'm telling you, now is the time. You guys, I can't say it enough. Now is the time God wants to pour out his spirit on all, not just some, not just the set apart. That's why I feel like right now God is, is kind of torn down the, the church walls and loosed his people and let them go into the world. And I believe that right now God is doing something in the midst of his people. Whether we see it or not, whether you can feel it or not, the spirit is moving. So if you're ready, I'm ready to dive into God's word today. Man, I, I just, uh, I can't wait to hear what what comes out of this series as you step into the best life yet. I'm telling you, if you're ready for your future 
to look perfect compared to your past. If you're ready to step into God's uh, redeeming power and let him restore and redeem what was, I'm telling you, this is a word for you. And I encourage you with this word that get your journal out, get something out to write it down so that you can prepare yourself to step into this life of being rooted in him. Today, I, I feel like this word is so on fire. I feel like this word is going to get in your spirit. It's going to transform the way you approach 2021. And if you're ready to go into the best year you've ever had, come on, put it in the chat right now. Say, I'm ready. You got to get yourself ready. And if you will heed this word, I promise you, if you will heed this word, you are going to benefit. If you will heed this word, this will be the best year you've ever lived. I promise you this. If you will heed this word and get it in your spirit and let it become action, let it become your steps. Like David said, I meditate on your word day and night. Let it get in me so it transforms me. I'm renewed, transformed, as Paul said, transformed by the renewing of my mind. Tony, if you get this word in you, put it to action. It's going to transform everything in you. So let's go. You ready for this? All right. Today, I want to share a, a surefire way to stay the course of living your destiny. You know, this season can knock you off your feet. I don't know if it, some of you find yourself there. Maybe you're sitting on the ground and you're just, you know, seeing stars. You're like, what just happened? That season was crazy. It's wild. And maybe some of you are counting down the days for 2021 to come. You just can't wait to push reset. You want it to all be done, be over. But let me ask you a question. What if you get to 2021 and it is the exact same circumstances, the exact same situations, the exact same people, exact same fears and things that are going on in our world? What if nothing circumstantial changes? Then all this hope that we have for the future what does it amount to? Absolutely nothing. But I want to give you today a surefire way to come into 2021 to live your best, to come into it with a faith that is solid, not something that is shifty, that you're waiting on the next media you know, outlet to tell you that life is getting better. Not for you to hear, okay, the vaccine's here. Oh, our savior's here. Not to hear that, okay, that president got, okay, yes, that man is going to help us. I'm telling you, this is a word that will be a surefire way that you will step into 2021 secure in your faith. Though circumstances may not change, you will be steadfast. So if you're ready, let's get into it, all right? Let's go. I want to ask you one question before we get started today. And the question is this. Are you connected to a network that is life-giving? Are you connected? And when I say the word connected, sometimes that can mean such shallow things these days. I mean, we're connected because we're on the same social media page or we like the same food or, you know, we're connected because we attend the same church or we're connected because, you know, we go to the same gym, we work out together. Maybe we even work at the same workspace together. So we're connected. I'm not talking about that kind of connection today. So I want to define connection. When I say, when I ask you, are you connected? I want you to understand that this connection is deeper. It's a deeper rooted. It's the, the binding of like the rope, the three strands of rope coming together that cannot be torn apart. So I'm going to ask you that question one more time through that lens. Are you connected to a life-giving network? Are you connected to a network that lights you up? And if you're not, that's okay. We're going to talk about it today. I'm going to show you how to unlock the, the, the faith in you. I'm going to show you how to unlock the passions in you. And especially in this season, if you'll make the decision, you got to pre-decide. Again, it comes back to decision. Jesus said that to his disciples. You have to decide. Who do you say that I am. I know the world may say one thing, but you have to decide who I am. And so we, we, we look at that today and asking yourself that question as we go through today. So I want to define the network because God's network is so, man, so deep. Let's, let's talk about the network of God. Let's talk about the family of God. I've been reading through Acts. I've been just totally consumed with the church of Acts because this time is really just uh, you know, brought about a lot of searching and a lot of seeking after God and just asking God, what is this season for? 
What are you doing in the church? How are we going forward? And just all the visions and the prophecy that is over this time, I'm telling you, it's caused me to go deeper in him. It's caused me to seek and search and and really just fall more madly in love with Jesus. But in the season, he's really shown me in the, the, the book of Acts, this network, this network, this family. That's a good word for it. Let's call it family. Because if you're not connected to a life-giving community that is family, then you haven't truly experienced the fullness of what God designed as the church. You see, if you're right now, maybe you're going through life and, and your network, whatever, is, is those very shallow connections. And maybe you do. Maybe you have a bunch of you know, people that you associate with. Maybe you even you know, attend the same church or go to the same places. And so you're connected, but you've never fully experienced or plugged in to the power of community. That's what I'm going to talk about today because there's so much power in community. There's so much power when you invest in relationships, when you invest and devote yourself. And we look at the book of Acts and this church was on fire. I mean, and all it says is they were devoted to the teaching of the word and devoted to fellowship. They were devoted to one another. And I believe that's what God is calling us to do as the church is to be devoted to one another, to live in perfect unity. You want to, you want to get a, you want a movement to get behind right now. And I know there's a ton of you know, reasons to raise your fist and reasons to go protest and to stand up for social justice and what's going on. And I understand all that and that's all good, but you want a real reason to stand up right now, a real movement to get behind We have got to, as the church, rebel. That's right. We have to rebel. We got to rebel against what culture is calling us to. Because culture is calling us to be this isolated, disunified culture. And I'm telling you, it's a time for us as the church to say, enough's enough. Enough with the isolation. Enough with being disunified. Enough with with being uh, disgruntled with each other because of minor issues, temporary issues that won't matter when we get before him. You see, as the church, we don't look through the lens of the world. You got to stop looking through the lens of the world. I'm telling you, if you are so fed right now by the culture that's outside, if you're so fed by what is going on in the world and, and your emotions are on this roller coaster because of what Facebook just said or what they just released in the government or the, the restrictions that happened or, or this, this happened with the virus or this, I'm telling you, you will go nuts if you look through that filter. The church has got to look through the filter of kingdom reality. It's a whole new way to look at life. And if you are looking right now through that world's perspective, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. And that's why it's so important to have perfect unity in Christ, to come together and be this body, to be the family of Christ, that, that we are one with each other. But right now, this is something to stand for. In our world of fear, and our world that is driven right now by so many different emotions, we have got to be a people that stand up for unity. We stand up for community. We stand up for perfect unity in Christ. Come on, if you're ready to do that, if you're ready to step into that, make a stand. Would you just put a, a fist emoji? Is that is that a thing? Is there a fist emoji in there? Go ahead and put that in there. However you want to put it, but put a flame emoji. However, let's let's stand up for what God wants to do because in that space of unity, Jesus said, they will know me through your perfect unity. The world will know who I am by the way that you forgive each other, by the way that you devote yourselves to one another, by the way that you are not caught up in the world, but caught up in love. I'm telling you, this is a place that God has designed for you to grow, for you to be rooted in order to gain true life, sustenance, something that will take you to a whole new level of perspective that the world cannot shake you. See, looking at the life of Jesus, I mean, goodness, he was sleeping through storms. He was laughing whenever people were saying that people were dead because he knew something that was different than what everybody else knew. He would walk into every situation with a kingdom reality, not seeing life at what everybody else was seeing. He saw heaven. He saw God's reality. He saw Holy Spirit power. He had already experienced it. And so he was walking in true 
definition of heaven on earth. And that's what he's calling us to do. And if you're not connected, if you're not plugged in to a life giving network, I'm telling you, today is your day to go into that. We will thrive. I'm telling you, you will thrive in the encounter. You will thrive in the encounter, thrive in life-giving devotion to one another. Let's look at John. Let's crack open the word. John chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 9. So get your Bible, light it up if it's on your phone. John chapter 15, verse 9. Give you some time. We got some red letters here, which means it's the words of Jesus. And Jesus is teaching, and he says in verse 9, he says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. Ooh, that's good. Verse 10, if you obey my commands, there's the if. Man, you always have to read that with knowing that there's something on the other side of that if. When you read the word therefore or you read the word if, you know that that is something in conjunction with something else. So he says, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Come on, how many want complete joy? Come on, I'm not talking about that fluffy happiness stuff that only lasts for a little bit, only lasts if the circumstance is good, only lasts if you get that job promotion, only lasts if you don't get sick. Come on, I'm talking about not a fluffy happiness. I'm talking about complete joy. Something inside of you that rises up and creates laughter. It creates a, a, a bubbly, a soaring for your for your body that you, everywhere you go, you feel light. You feel his joy in you. I'm talking about that kind of joy. He says that kind of joy will be complete in you. And he goes on, he says, my command is this. And here's the command. This is the if part. He says, that, that is what I want for you, that complete joy. That's what he wants for you in this season. It's the complete joy. For his joy to be complete in you. That you don't, you're not rocked by what's happening in our world. You're not rocked by what's happening. Now, can we live in a false reality? No, absolutely not. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in him coming back for us. Our hope is Jesus living with him in heaven someday. That is our hope. Our hope is not in this world. So our joy cannot come from circumstance. It cannot come from this world. It, it, that is temporary and that is, that is the fluffy happiness, man. But I'll tell you what, his joy would be complete. And this is what he says. He says, my command is this. This is, this is what he said. He said, if you obey my father's commands, and here's his command. He says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Ooh, can we just simplify? Can we just simplify our job? And we overcomplicate it sometimes. But can I just simplify it for you? Somebody asked Jesus and they said, hey, what are the, what is the greatest commandments? What's the greatest commandments? And he's, he literally just dumbed it down. He said, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor. Love me, love people. Love me, love people. Can we just dumb it down and stop overcomplicating it? God has called us to fall in love with him. It's not rocket science. He wants us to encounter him and to encounter him in a lover way. That when we get before him, when we're in his presence, we are so in love with him that it saturates all parts of us. All parts of our hearts, all parts of our minds, all parts of our thinking and sub-thinking and all parts of us is drenched in the love of Christ. And then out of that, we are able to love one another. And I think that that's what's so powerful about this is that my joy is complete in you when you love each other. So it goes back to that question. Are you connected to a life-giving network? This is a connection with those that love the Father unconditionally, those that are saturated with who he is and then pour that love into one another. That is a life-giving community. That's a community where we are whole and healthy, helping one another. When you are 
at your lowest, that's when I can come in and fill you up. When I'm feeling that that day that coming on, you can come in and say, hey, this is the love of Christ. Let me love you to complete joy. And when we do that, it is fullness of life. Are you experiencing that? Are you experiencing the life-giving joy of Christ in your life? No matter what happens to you, love each other. Christ said, that is my command for you. That's my command for you, to love one another. You know how the early church thrived through persecution and hard times? I mean, you look at the, the early church and it's like, we have nothing on them. I mean, goodness, there was so much happening to that church to try to tear down the kingdom. And I wonder what would happen if that happened today. If all of a sudden we weren't free to meet and proclaim who Jesus is, if all of a sudden America wasn't the nation that we've grown up in, and all of a sudden we were persecuted for our faith, I wonder what would happen to the majority of the church. But you look back and you look and see how they were thriving and what they were, and it, it all came out of being devoted to fellowship, being devoted to one another. They were devoted to the word of God, knowing it. They were devoted to loving Christ with all their heart and they were devoted to one another. Their community is what grounded them and rooted them. The relationship with Jesus and with each other rooted them. I'm telling you, this is what Christ wants to do in your life. He wants to sustain you. He wants to foundation you in a solid rock, not in something that makes you feel good, but something that builds your character, where you're built on a rock that no matter what storms come, no matter what you face in 2021, you know, who knows what's coming around that bend, but whatever comes, you are solid. And that happens in community. I'm telling you, but it's, it's motion. The Bible says that they devoted themselves. They devoted themselves. This isn't something that is handed to you. This is something that you must do something with. This is one of those action words, man. You can't read this word and do nothing with it. You can't just read this word and put it on the shelf and say, oh, that's good. I'm just going to get that in my spirit. No, no, no. You have to move. Motion. You got to do something with it. And so today is your day. Tell you, today is your day to plug into that power to have your joy be complete. My fear is that today, man, with social media uh, being the charge of our culture with, uh, with everything going on with, you know, the video game world and streaming networks. I mean, goodness, we are so plugged in to media outlets. And I, I fear that it is creating this false reality for people to run to, to escape what's happening in our world. And instead of the church rising up to their calling, we crave, we crave to just escape, to just escape. Man, it's crazy how many, many people just, just crave to, you know, binge watch something on Netflix or, or just scroll on their Instagram for hours. And I, I'm not condemning anybody because I've been there. I've been there where I just want to turn it off. I just want to plug into something that takes me out of the crazy and business of life. So I get it. I understand, but my fear is that plugging into that false reality, coming into a whole new world, we are creating a sleeping church that's sleeping to their calling. It's sleeping to our purpose. And if we're not plugging into life-giving community, like we're designed to do, Christ said, this is how you complete that joy in your life. If you obey this command, you gotta love one another. And the love he's talking about is not the love we feel. It's not the love that is the emotional high. It's like, oh, that person was so sweet. Oh, that church made me feel good. So I want to love them. No, the, his love is the choice love. It's the unconditional laying down your life. He goes on, and he says, no greater love than to lay down your life for your friend. Man, that's deep. That's deep. We want to we wanna get married, right? To fall in love with the prince or the princess that's going to make us feel good. But he, Paul says, hey, if you want to get married, that's great. Husbands, you got to love your wife like Christ loved the church. Lay down your life for her. Wives, you have to submit to your husbands. I mean, this is, this is crazy talk in today's society because we want to feel something. But I'm telling you, it only happens when we are awake to our calling, when we understand what reality is. And right now, I'm telling you, if you're craving, if you're craving to, to 
unplug and plug into a false reality more than you're craving the Father, more than you're craving life-giving community, can I tell you to unplug? Man, cut away the distractions. Can I tell you to pull out the IV? Man, if you're being fed by so many things in the world and you get in this false reality, you can't wait for all these things to happen or these things to take place more than you can't wait to hear the Father's voice. You can't wait to hear him speak over you. You can't wait to plug into community and love somebody and serve them and and fulfill the call of God on your life. If you're craving more than that, unplug the IV. Pull it out. It's time to make a decision today to plug into the Father because when you do, He lights you up. When When He does this in your life, you understand a whole new reality that you're not here for you. And this culture wants to defeat us that. That, oh, it's all about you. What's your preference? What it makes you feel good. Man, can I tell you, I'm sick of it. And I'm tired of, of seeing Christians fall asleep at the wheel. It's time for us to stand up as a church, wake up, realize where we are. It's like that movie. I can't remember what it is. But when they're in a dream and they come out of the dream and realize they've been hooked up to a machine, it's all been fake. I'm telling you, when you come to Christ, when you plug into community, you wake up to reality. You wake up to, oh my word, this is why I'm here. I remember the moment when Christ got a hold of me and I understood my calling. It was like I could see for the first time. It's like I could hear for the first time. It's like I loved people more than I've ever loved them before. I'm telling you, this pandemic has wrecked me in a good way. And I love it. But it's time for us to step into reality because see, the enemy is trying really hard. Hell is trying really hard to trick people into thinking that this life is all they have. That this world is it. And so we have to make this world a better place. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But this world is on a path to destruction. You have to know that. That's reality. You think this is bad? I'm not trying to be a doomsday prepper, but this is nothing. Read Revelation. Read what's to come. You have to understand the reality of where we are. We are on this world, and this is not our home. You cannot, you cannot get too comfortable here. I'm telling you, you have to be caught up in his mission. You have to be caught up in his purposes, because when you are, the joy of the Lord is complete in you because you have the blessed hope. You have the blessed hope that he is coming for you. He gives you something to sustain this life more than anything that this world could offer you or try to bring you. I'm telling you, it's the false reality. False reality. And I urge you to pl- unplug, unplug. Get that hope that's not deferred. That hope that is steadfast in him. I'm gonna look at Matthew. So turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 18. We're gonna look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Read a couple verses here with me, okay? Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 says, I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you in my Father, by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. What a verse. This jumped out of the page of me because you know what? Sometimes we overlook the power of community. We overlook the power of connection. And especially in today's society where we feel connected online, right? I'm searching your page or scrolling through your stuff. So I feel like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm a part of their life. It's such false reality. It's false connection. It's not real. And if we want the sustaining like relationship that Christ ordained for us to have, I'm telling you, we have to gather We have to plug into one another. We have to love each other with Christ's love. Pour hope into one another. This is how God designed the church to work. I promise you, if if you are searching and looking for different things to fulfill you, and in this season, if you are being wrecked by what is happening in our world, and you are getting so caught off and your emotions are just a roller coaster up and down, I'm telling you today, it's time to plug into a steadfast relationship with one another. A a life-giving community that you can charge from. But we have to own it as the church. We have to become ones who own this calling on us to devote ourselves to one another. Are you ready for that? Today, are you ready to decide to plug into community? That maybe you've been settling for a weekend church where you just come on the weekends and maybe you're even now you're just watching online, but it's kind of in the background. And it's like, you're not really plugged in. Christ didn't die 
so that we could have a weekend service. <laughs> Christ did not die so that you could feel good in a chair or feel good in a pew, sitting, watching, getting fed, 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 fed. Christ died to set you free. He, he died so that you could be ignited and light the world on fire. And if you are not yet experiencing the life-giving release, the life-giving experience of community, I'm telling you, today is your day. It's time to stop playing the, the world's church or the world's perspective on your life. It's time to plug into God's reality for you and start making connection. I was doing some studying I don't know if you know this, but there's a study out there called the Wood Wide Web. Now, you're going to have to look back into it to, to get more information on the science of it. I'm just going to dumb it down today because I can't go into the scientific facts. I'm just not that bright. But I tell you, the dumbed down version of it is this. Trees talk to one another underground through their roots. And fungi is, is actually a living so it gives them nutrients and trades it for sugars. And all this is going on underneath the ground where trees are actually feeding one another. And they've done research and biologists, all, all they can't call it anything else but just the wood wide web because it's like an internet connection where they're talking to one another and sending messages. And, and it's crazy because they've studied and found out that the weak trees actually send messages to the healthy trees and the healthy trees send nutrients and water and everything they need. So if there's a tree that's in the shade or not getting enough water, not getting enough nutrients in its soil, the other trees will actually feed it so it can survive. Isn't that nuts? And I, I was, when I was studying this, I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. Like that, that is nuts that trees are actually doing this. And, and the spirit spoke to me and said, that's how I've designed the church to be. I've designed the church to work like that, like a colony, like a tribe. And right now people are so segregated and they're so isolated and in their homes and feeling so, so away from one another, so disconnected. But I'm telling you right now, Christ wants to, de to develop in you a network where you have somebody to turn to. When you're having that day, when you're in the shade, you can't feel the sunlight. When you're hitting a storm, you're hitting something that's trying to take you out. The enemy is trying to lie at you and trying to tell you that you're no good or inadequate or whatever. He loves to lie, that he is the father of lies. And when you're having that day, I'm telling you, God's design for the church is for you to be able to reach out to somebody and say, hey, I need sustenance. I need nutrients right now. I need water. I need the sun. I can't feel it right now. I'm in, a, I'm, in, I'm in a valley right now. I need someone to lift me up. I'm telling you, Christ designed the church to be this so that we could be there for one another. So that in my, in my strength, in my, my plugged into Christ, I can pour into you and say, hey, here's some nutrients until you get back on your feet. Hey, here's some life. Let me speak truth over you. Let me speak the truth of God over you you because God has filled me up so much right now that I just want to pour it out on you. And then when those days hit where I'm in the shade and I can't feel nothing and I'm, I'm lost in my identity and I, I've, I've lost my perspective, I can say, hey, I need help. I need somebody to reach out to me. Come on. I need the word of God. I need truth. It's like when Jesus changed Peter's name and he, he changed his name. He spoke over him the truth of God. All of his life, he heard pebble and God spoke stone, foundation, rock, solid. And that's what we need to do for one another. That's what Christ is doing in the church. It's his design. And if you've settled for the world's version of church where you're just isolated, you're on your own little forest and you're on your own little tree and you're not reaching out to anybody and you're just struggling through life, I'm telling you, stop. Please stop. This is a life-giving community. And it's time for you to settle in, to plug in, to live your best life to come alive to your purpose, to stop settling for, for being isolated, to stop settling for dying. I'm telling you, Christ called you to be alive and well and to live out your purpose in life. So let's, let's do that together. You gotta make a decision to dive into this community. If those of you that are struggling this season, plugged in to those who have hope right now. Because this season is hitting a lot of us differently. You know, for, for some of us, this has been one of the most fruit-filled seasons where we've dug deep. I'm telling you, we've dug deep. We've had to search and, and develop and come to this place of being unified with Christ 
it's been a developing phase for me. I mean, this season has developed so much in me that I didn't have pre-COVID. I didn't have pre-pandemic. But now Christ has developed in me. I'm telling you, this is a time for those of you who are feeling just like you can't move on. Today's your day. It's time to plug in. You got to make a decision. And I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out today. Jesus is calling you in to a, a community, not of just people who make you feel good, not people who just tell you false lies and like, oh no, you're going to make it. It's all good. But we are plugged into truth. We're plugged into reality. This world wants to sell you a reality that's not real. But if you will plug into the real reality, you'll understand what real hope is. You'll understand what real joy is. Not just a bunch of, you know, individuals trying to make it through this pandemic. We're going to struggle. We're, we're on our grind. No, to be a thriving community. And right now, it's virtual. Right now, it looks like plugging into a Zoom. I know. I know you Zoomed out. I'm Zoomed out too. I don't like virtual. I don't like uh, getting in a Zoom room as much as the next person. But can I tell you that whatever it takes, we need to connect. Whatever it takes, we need to plug into one another. If that means a phone call, if that means a, a text message, if that means a Zoom, then we're going to do it. Why? Because God called us to this. He says, don't neglect the gathering. Please don't neglect the gathering. And it wasn't talking about a weekend experience to just come together and just this shallow meeting together. I'm telling you, if this is your definition of church where this is it, you missed it. You totally missed it because Christ wants you deep. He wants you rooted, not just resting on him when you need him, not just resting on him when it feels good or when you have a little time that is extra so you can give it to, I'm telling you, he wants you rooted in him it's going to sustain you. It's going to make a joy that is complete in you. I'm going to look at one more scripture. Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to close with this. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Turn with your Bibles to me. I love this scripture. Man, I've been quoting this for a bit. And just now is God really releasing just what it is to me. And sometimes God will do that. He'll lay a scripture in my heart to be like, hey, you need to learn this. And so I'll get it in my spirit. I'll learn it. I'll try to you know, memorize it and really meditate on it. And then there'll be a day where it just clicks. Like, oh, wow, yes, 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 yes. And this was one of those. Philippians chapter two, verse three. says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you, should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Then it goes on to say, therefore God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, the name Jesus, where every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. This is an incredibly powerful principle to put in your life. I'm telling you, this is one of those words that if you put it in place, will set you free. Because let me tell you, as long as you live for yourself, as long as you live through the lens of trying to fulfill you, trying to fill your life, trying to make sure that you're okay, you will be miserable because you're never going to come to that place. Because he says, my joy is complete in you when you love one another with that unconditional love. Not love yourself, not do self-care. I'm telling you, this is, a, this is a time where the world is trying to turn everybody to take care of yourself. It's all about you. Keep, it, keep yourself safe. I'm telling you, this is a time where the church has to rebel. We have to say enough is enough. We need to be about others. We have to be about each other. We have to plug into one another and say, it is about you. Christ died so that I could be free to set you free. And if I'm feeling hope filled right now, I need to pour it out into somebody else. If I'm feeling hopeless, I need to plug into somebody who has hope because we are not meant to live on this wishy-washy, falling out of the boat kind of feeling. It's a time for us to be solid and rooted. How many of you are ready to be rooted 
in Jesus. Come on, how many of you are ready to be rooted and connected to life-giving family? It's time to make that decision today. So I challenge you with this. It's time to make a move to covenant. Make a move to covenant. We talk about this in change, but covenant is something where we make a bond with each other. We say, you know, this is what we do with Christ. When we come to him, we make a covenant. Christ, you are Lord. You are king. I, I die to my old self. I come in and I'm new in you. It's a covenant I make with Jesus. And we make a covenant with each other. And we say, hey, I make a covenant with you that I will do life with you. That's just that's a cute line that we came up with. It's like, we do life together because every church does that. And that's just the way we do life. No, no, that's not just a cute line. It's a lifestyle that we have to decide every day. I will do life with you. Even the days that you make me feel maybe not the best. Maybe you wake up in a bad mood and it sets me off. I don't care. I've made a covenant with you to say in good, in bad, in storms, and in sunshine, I am going to love you. I am going to be committed to our relationship. I'm going to be committed to growing you in the faith. I'm going to be committed to making sure that you are planted. Man, some of you need to get that because you've been settling for this, just being rested on Jesus and rested on each other when it's comfortable and when you have time. Hey, enough's enough. It's time to rebel against that, to plug into reality that Christ wants you rooted. So I want to pray over you today that you make that decision. Man, I'm telling you, it's, if it'll change your life. It'll change the way you approach 2021. And this year won't be scary. It won't be a fear-filled year because you won't be relying on the world to tell you what's coming. You'll be relying on a life-giving community that's plugged in and rooted in Christ, rooted in the reality of heaven, that we are not shaken by what's happened in this world because this isn't our world. The world that we are hoped for is heaven. So I want to pray over you that God gives you that tenacity, that gives you that, 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 that deciding factor in you. I'm telling you, we talked about that last week or the week before, just the deciding factor. I want to pray that over you, that God gives you that ability to step in. Man, don't go away from this word and do nothing with it. I'm telling you, this is a season God wants to grow you. He wants to give you fruit. And if you're not yet seeing fruit, it might be because you're not rooted in him might be because you're not rooted in community. So let's pray today that God would fill you up. We're going to have some questions in the comments in just a little bit so you can process because we believe that God is a God of the process. And if you take this word and you just move on to the next thing, move on to, you know, what's coming next, you're going to miss it because God wants to process something in you. And Christ truly wants to take you to that place of being solid, to be in a place where you are rooted in him. Where you're not shaken by what's happening around, but you are rooted in the one who is the rock. I want to pray for you right now. We just receive this. God, we just thank you so much for those who are watching this today. We are connected spiritually through this, this online community. And God, I just pray right now that you would fill them up with your spirit. Fill them up with a desire to be connected. That this would not be a season they do alone that we would not go through this world trying to figure it out or trying to do it on our own, but God, plug us in to life-giving community. I just pray for them. They would decide today. They'd make that decision to reach out to somebody, to reach out to somebody and say, hey, let's do a Bible study together. Let's, let's go through the word together. Hey, let's, let's get a phone call on the schedule, on the calendar, that we can make a, an intentional move towards relationship, that we go deeper, not just talking about surfacey stuff, but talking about what God is doing, what the Spirit is speaking, what, what I've learned in my word. Just little things, God, let us make that decision today that as we approach the new year, we will be solidified in that community. We'll be solidified in a life-giving community that we are unified in Christ. We just love you guys so much. And I pray for those that don't know you today, that maybe want to make a decision to come into relationship with you. I just pray that they would make that, that decision right now. And I just thank you so much for their life. And thank you for what you're calling them into, God, that no matter where they're coming from, you have called them higher. You've called them to a purpose and you have such an amazing calling on their life. And I just pray that over them, that they would be strengthened. They'd have the peace of God over what's coming, God, and they would trust in you. Father, we love you and we trust you. We just pray that this word would transform us, that we could become new as we step into the future that you've designed for us. 
We love you, God, and we trust you in your name we pray. Amen.